there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com with this week's episode of the Market Monday. This week, I want to do my analysis of mind versus might and kind of a should you buy. What is the future, at least financially, for this deck? Is there some good investments? Is it just going to crash? How's the gameplay with this deck? Just uh, all of the above. So let's just dig right into it. This is going to be a blue-red versus a green-red deck, and it's surprising because it's very similar to one of the last ones they did, which was Speed versus Cunning, which is a Mardu deck versus a Jeskai deck. And it was basically a very fast deck with Mardu, and the Speed, of course, being the quick deck, and then kind of a Drago-type tempo style for the Cunning. Uh, so this one is very similar with how they play out. So first of all, mind the, it's going to be Jora of the Gitchu that is kind of the, it's going to be the alternate art, going to be, I don't know if these are foils or not. I haven't read too much into it, but this is a popular commander. Uh, just a little bit of, of history with my commander uh, play group. If I see anyone play Jora, I will kill them first. This commander does degenerate beyond degenerate things. Excellent an online card from your hand. Put four time counters on it. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. Then four turns later, they cast Omniscience and draw their entire deck. And then, or, or like enter the infinite and Omniscience. And ugh, I'm just so sick of Jora decks. They're usually all built very, very similar. And they both, uh, most of the ones that I've played against, they just sit there and do nothing and suspend a bunch of, of cards and then just win once the suspend triggers uh, actually elapse. But anyway, that's just kind of my my beef with decks like Jora. Um, there is some good cards out of it. Some of the cards that are money-based cards like the Mind's Desire and the Beacon of Unrest. Uh, we'll go over the entire list, but it looks like it's trying to ramp, do some ramp things and trying to, to Jora is a real huge piece to this deck. I don't think that if you don't get it in your opening hand, it's going to struggle. So Might is going to be Lovisa Cold Eyes, who is a five mana, gives all warriors and Barbarians and Berserkers plus 2 plus 2 in haste. So again, it's kind of got that speed feel as well because most of the cards that are in the deck are going to be either the... A lot of them are warriors for sure. So it uses cards like Rada and Combo Pit Fighter, the Barbarian and the Warrior will gain haste. Uh, of course, this can do 3 damage. Uh, it's got some flashback cards like Call the Herd and Arrogant Worm as well as some other Bloodthirst aggressive base cards. So all in all, it seems like a fun deck to play. But we're going to go over the value here of the cards. Uh, first of all, I just want to speak about the playability. Both of these seem incredibly clunky because, like I said, if you don't get Jora, how in the hell are you going to cast these cards? They are very, very hard to cast, especially with a, a 24 land count. Even Firemind's Foresight, all of these things are very, very tough. Uh, just went with one desperate ritual. That's it. That's the only way they're ramping as far as uh, the... Goblin Electromancer is not going to get the job done with like the Unspeakable and Deep Sea Kraken, as well as even these higher base cards to cast. So it has some low draw go type cards, but I guess you can find the Unspeakable through Sift Through the Sands, but it still seems clunky because you draw two cards and discard a card for three mana, and then you have to play uh, Peer Through the Depths and Reach Through the Mist on the same turn. Then you can get the Unspeakable and put it into play. But with only... So we have three Reach Through Mists and two Peer Through the Depths and two Sit Through Sands. I guess it can happen, but to me it's not really going to happen that often. Uh, it does have this Storm with Empty the Warrens and Grape Shot, which is nice for the Storm archetype. It's going to ele elevate some of the prices of these type of cards. But again, it just seems super, super clunky for this deck. I think it's just going to overrun. Of course, I haven't play tested these decks, but it looks like it's just going to get overrun with Might. Except that Might has a really clunky curve as well. So the one little shining light to this deck is it does have Rift Bolts. And Rift Bolts are one of the cards that I did predict to go up in value quite substantially. Uh, because it hasn't had a printing in quite a while. But this is really going to put a bottom to the Rift Bolts. Because when you're looking at dual decks, you need to find cards that don't have value based upon that they're extremely rare like beacon of tomorrows we saw that with the commander decks when commander was printed commander 2016 i believe there was over 700 dollars worth of cards but most of them were in the in the three to five dollar range and most of those cards were only three to five dollars because of rarity scarcity i would say not because of playability so cards like beacon of tomorrows or even even the jora that gets you or some of these other cards in here that have value are only valuable because they had printings in such really, really dismally opened or printed sets. So with this one, we do have Young Pyromancer and Rift Bolt. So that's good news 
for this deck except that the young pyromancer was recently reprinted it does also have a desperate ritual and i think that people actually will like to play this it actually does give you a pretty good intro based commander i mean once you if you want to play jora this is a good way to get jora and then have a bunch of one of cards that would go in a, an early commander based deck also as a tower end tower end does continue to to see print after print after print so i don't think that tower ever going to be able to go up in value is a popular commander you see it every now and then. i think i've seen it in a legacy deck at one point modern it's never found a home as it's just too hard to protect in modern. I think if maybe some of the control cards get better in modern, Tauran could be a win con. So let's just go over Might, what I think about Might. Might is really interesting, except I think they should have gone up the count in Burning Tree Emissaries, because a lot of these decks do synergize with Burning Tree Emissary. Other than it doesn't, Burning Tree Emissary is a human shaman, so it doesn't get the, the effect of the Lovisa Cold Eyes. Kind of, uh, meh. You want know, to be a fun way to actually play this, though, is actually play it with a commander type. Because I think both these decks want their want Jora and they want Lavisa as options to cast as as fast as humanly possible. And when you only have one of them in the deck, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be tough to find. But anyway, we have the Scargan Pit Skulker, which is a cool Popper card. It's seen playing Popper from time 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 again into the Stompy decks. Um, I th I've thought about running it in a Hardened Scales based deck, but there's a lot of non bows with hardened scales in this card because of the bloodthirst like the it doesn't come out it's better just to play one drop that automatically gets a 1-1 counter uh rather than having to try to to set it up later on uh with like hardened scales and then the whiny constrictor um this would have to be like a late drop so the crew and striker is a really cool card i've played this in modern i actually do think crew and striker is modern playable uh, i played it in a burning tramissary type deck and it's 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 really really quick especially i like this card a lot with like the the uh the goblin bushwhackers or reckless bushwhackers as it can whenever another creature enters the battlefield in your control it gets plus one plus zero trample until a turn it feels very very similar to the one drop goblin that gets plus one plus zero uh whenever red card comes into play so you can really chain off and this guy gets incredibly big and it's very easy to lethal in a budget bushwhacker deck love this card uh we have the Talar's Battalion that's been creeping up in price, uh, again, just because it's kind of in a, uh, it was at Eventide. It's in a, a very, very low printed set. Uh, it's a 4 3 trample for 2 mana. It works really well. I th I'm surprised I haven't seen a deck that's running it with the now basically the 8 Burning Trama series. You have the Revolt one from Aether Revolt. And so you could have seen this card steadily go up in value with people a budget building around this, this, this 8 emissary type deck. And this would be a four of, of course, because then it would be able to be uh, basically a, a Burning Tremissary on turn two or one of the Revolt guys on turn two and maybe chain into multiples as well as the Battalion. A four three trample, of course, is not too shabby and modern, even though I think even even a deck that could afford Goyf would probably want Goyf almost always over this card. It's just a more stable uh, card to throw out. So, again, I think the Burning Tremissary probably wanted to be a little bit higher because it synergizes quite well with everything in this deck. Uh, even you could find the, the Firebolt into the um, Scar and Pit Skulk on turn number two. So you go Burning Tremissary, Firebolt to the face, and then the Pit Skulk. So cool synergies in this deck. However, I think it starts to lose its value right here when the curve just makes this massive jump. Uh, we do have some threes and fours, but it's it, it goes really heavy really quickly. And these aren't the highest impact cards you want to be spending money on. Uh, Real Nice Hunter is okay. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3 that then can give plus ones on Trample. Sure. Uh, Zozo the Punisher is okay, too. So it's, it's going to deal some damage every time a land comes into play, sure. Uh, I'm surprised that people haven't played this in Scape Ship, against Scape Ship for sideboard. It's just kind of awkward at three. I think this needed to be a little bit lower. Uh, it would be a little bit broken if it was lower. But anyway, then we have the Ambassador Oak, which is kind of a weird filler in this one. It does put a 1-1. One, one war. They are Warrior Warrior, so they both do get the synergy eyes off the, the cold eyes. So yeah, I guess that works out perfectly. A Greenhorn Minotaurs keeps with the Blood Thirst uh, type. Um, and then there's this terrible... Does this deck even run anything with flying? I guess it does. Yeah, okay. Never mind. I'm like, why do they have Reach in here? Uh, but it does block the 2-2 two, two Drakes. Uh, so anyway, yeah, but just curves up to even a 7 drop, which seems very, very awkward, other than we do have the 25 lands. We also have a Coat of Arms. It doesn't really synergize the greatest and helps your opponent's Drakes get huge. So keep that in mind. That is the money card over of the Might end of the... 
Spectrum, I don't think any of these other ones are really worth anything. And I know that Gutter Response was going up in value. Uh, but then the deck that played it, this usually was in like a Glittering Wish. It was a target you could get for Glittering Wish. Some sideboards would run it. Uh, it's very good against like Cryptic Command or whatnot. Uh, so Firebolt 2 was creeping up for Popper, but it got reprinted in the Eternal Masters. And Call of the Herd just, of course, got a reprinting in Modern Mass in, or excuse me, the Firebolt in Eternal Masters. And Call of the Herd got a reprint in Modern Masters as well as Harmonize. So yeah, we, these are really quite awkward, the double reprints. It seems like Wizards really likes to do this in Secession. Uh, we saw it with like the Coiling Oracle getting reprinted over and over and over and like Temple of the False Gods just had a huge reprint right in a row, like, like sequential right in a row with many, many uh, printings. So anyway, that is kind of my overview of how I like the decks. If I had to grade this, it's an interesting enough deck. I think they're well put together. Uh, the curves are kind of awkward, so they're going to lead to some clunky draws on both sides. And so you might just, the winner of both of these might just end up being the one with the better curve uh, right out the, right, or if they can get their namesake cards in the opening hand, uh, then that probably happens. Uh, that'll probably lead to a lot more of the, of, especially this deck winning, because it is very awkward if like a Tauren and a Jorah is not in the opening hand. Anyway, let's get over to the financial value of this so you can see that according to goldfish there's sixty dollars of value in this mind versus might which is the msrp of this is 25 i can't remember the old ones i thought the old ones were 20 were with a dual deck so they've jacked up the price of dual deck someone correct me if i'm wrong but i remember buying these from wizards for like 11 and like all the dual decks and i thought their msrp was 20 i could be wrong so mind versus might will be 25 and they will be at Walmarts, they'll be at Targets, they will be everywhere in the entire world because this is a highly printed uh, box set that is supposed to target the casual player. So a lot of the competitive players are not going to like this unless it's, it, it really rings to their nostalgia. Uh, that would be the only reason to really pick this up because I do not think the financial value is worth it in this deck. You need to, for, for a deck like this to have value that sticks around you need to have cards like in, if you if you go back to even the Eldrazi versus Zendikar, like the Eldrazi Temple, something that is in high demand right now, they can hold the value of the box set. And right now, a lot of the value is in cards like Beacon of Tomorrow, and then even though that these $2 cards are just going to get murdered. So the Young Pyromancer, I think, is going to get hit hard again. It's not, just, it's not seeing enough play in Modern to really spike the value of Young Pyromancer, and it got that Eternal Masters printing, and this one could even decrease the value of Young Pyromancer. So I think a big 15, 20, 25% from Young Pyromancer. The Electromancer now has no chance of ever going up because it was printed in Modern Masters. Or Yes, it was. Yes, it was in Modern Masters uh, 2017. And then the, some of these rares are just bulk rares. So we have like Sage Eye and the Unspeakable and Talrand are all around the bulk price and so there's, or and even Jorian, all of these are around the bulk price and have very little chance of now ever seeing the light of day as far as not being a bulk rare. So what the might, the mind does have going for it is the Rift Bolts, the Desperate Ritual, and I think Quicken too. Quicken a lot of times does see some play every now and again in in, in different decks. But if anything's going to hold its value, it's going to be the Rift Bolt because I do think with Goblin. Uh, guide being reprinted. I think we're going to see a lot of people gravitate towards burn and we saw the Eidolon of Great Revel buyout and now it's it would shoot up the value of Rift Bolt but Rift Bolt is going to be very stable and now this gives people access to get into burn with Rift Bolts. So now we should start looking at the other cards in burn if you want to make some savvy investments because it's this kind of trickle effect that happens. If people have certain cards they're going to be like, oh, I've got the Goblin Guys and the Rift Bolts. Well, I might as well might as well build Burn. A lot of people look at their collection and say, "How? what is the closest deck for me to actually make a Tier 2, Tier 1 modern deck? And I think a lot of people now will choose Burn because of these recent reprints. So let's just click a Burn deck here and see what these other cards that need to be picked up for the deck. So first of all, the Monastery Swiss Spear, it did see a price increase due to Frontier, the hype for Frontier. Now that the Frontier hype has kind of settled down, 
Disclaimer, I'm still a huge cheerleader for Frontier. It's the most fun I've had in Magic in the last six months. I still think Standard and Modern are just garbage formats right now and are not very fun to play. And so I really wish there would be a revival for Frontier, but a lot of people are just really on edge because of Wizard's stance on they don't want Delve and Fetchlands in the next uh, format, non-rotating format they create. And that puts us in a weird spot with Origins just being too soon. And, of course, then Monsters Whisper would not be included in that new format that they're going to make. But I think they need to make a format as soon as possible because players like me that don't like the turn 2, turn 3, don't interact with your opponent setting of Modern. And then Standard just continues to have problem after problem after problem with their pushing of cards like Gideon and a lot of storyline-based cards being a little too powerful uh, compared to their counterparts really leaves us with with little options rather than you can't play a deck that the in the four drop slot without playing Gideon for example it's just there's no reason to play anything over Gideon at the moment I think the standards going to continue to be plagued with that because it's very very tough within six sets to or however many sets are in standard at the time to have answers for everything so one will always start to gain uh, dominance over its counterpart. So, I mean, look at Gisela. Just Gisela had no chance with a card like uh, Gideon in the format. So, anyway, uh, back to this burn. Now that I'm sidetracked, some of the cards that were not reprinted recently were Searing Blaze. Uh, Skullcrack was not in Modern Masters 2017, and neither was Lightning Helix, but this seems to get printed a ton. I would not uh, be surprised if it's in the new Arch Enemy with the, was it the Nicol Bolas uh, Arch Enemy? or some other box sets coming up. Boros Charm was also not reprinted, but was in Commander, and Lightning Bolt was not reprinted in Modern Masters. So I think if you're looking as Burn as a viable spec, Lava Spike, Lightning Bolt, and the Searing, Searing Blaze would be my picks. Skullcrack is still in a set that is very, very opened. I mean, I'm not open, but very, very... Uh, you can find $75 Gate Crash box. Like, so that's just going to keep the value down. I don't know. I guess that if shocks ever do go up, people start cracking them. But shocks have continued to still go down. So all the other cards were reprinted recently. Uh, the Bloodstained Mire, of course, just gets replaced in this particular deck. He was probably running Bloodstained Mire over the uh, Arid Maces just out of a budget reason. And those will just be replaced. So Burn is a very, very accessible deck, accessible deck right now uh, to play, especially after Rift Bolts and the Goblin Guides from recent printings. All right, so back to the the, the mind versus might. Uh, the other decks are other cards that do at least hold some value. Of course, the Desperate Ritual, the Grape Shot, the uh, Empty Warrens, but all of these seem to continue to be printed in in uh, packs here and there, or not packs, or in, in these box type sets. Uh, again, I do not think Beacon is gonna, is able to hold its value. I think this is the card that gets hit the most. It is a take extra turn. Uh, and it does shuffle back into your library, so Beacon is one of those take extra, extra turn cards that can be abused uh, to then gain all the turns because it doesn't exile itself, and then it, there's ways to tutor it back up from your library, uh, rinse and repeat. But the reason why this holds an $8 price tag is just because look at the set that it was printed in. So value-based, I don't think that that anything but the Rift Bull can really hold its value here. All right, so on to Might. Might even gets worse because it does. Its little chase card is the Coat of Arms. The Coat of Arms is eight bucks. It's been reprinted a ton. We don't know when the next time they're going to build a Sliver decks. Slivers seems to be like something they include. Or Coat of Arms is just easily reprinted in so many things. I'm surprised it hasn't seen a Commander reprint recently, but they did chuck it in this one, and this will definitely. The the good news for Coat of Arms is a heavily demand card for for uh, Commander. So. That one could hold its value better than Beacon. However, I, I don't see it. It's, it's one of those that is going to get hit the hardest because it's the only one out of this particular deck that has any value. The Talaris Battalion is going to get crushed. Absolutely crushed because of this. Uh, if you look at, at decks, was like the Stirring Wildwood or even like the Oblivion Sower uh, from recent uh, dual decks, these are the type of cards that have the low demand that get absolutely crushed. So I think this will go back down to a dollar or even less, like bulk rare status uh, from this deck. Uh, then anything else in this that we have the the Zozo the Punisher same thing. There's one of the reasons why it's worth so much right now is it's just out of well two dollars is it's just out of a very very low printed set and you can see some of these other uh, rares do not have any value whatsoever none because they've been either reprinted or just have never had the demand. So even Rubble Belt Raiders just very very horrible choices for the bulk rare slots for some of these uh, like like the 
uh, Firevine's foresights and the where the 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 Sage 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 Eye Avengers, the Unspeakable, all those cards just can't hold their value. Uh, same thing with uh, some of these recently reprinted, like Call the Herd, can't hold any value. Uh, gutter response, I think, will get hit a little bit, but it's probably the uncommon on this side that has the highest chance of actually holding any sort of value. So overall, I think that this the the misleading price tag of sixty dollars is going to go quickly down to the thirty to thirty five dollar range, and that will be when all of the cards are included. So that's including every like fifteen cent card. So the real value of this card, I believe, or the of this deck is going to be way below MSRP. So in conclusion. Is it worth it or not worth it to buy mine versus not might? Absolutely not worth it. I'm pretty sure you can piece out the particular um, cards that you want to buy for way less than MSRP once the dust settles. Just give this a week, you can buy them all. If, you, if you're looking for just Rift Bolts, you can buy them. If you're looking for Coat of Arms or Beacon, you can just buy those for the $4. Uh, I think the price tag of both of these will be after the dust settles. So I think this is going to continue to get worse and worse and worse as time goes on. This is going to be one of the mine versus might decks that will shit, well, <laughs> shit, sit on the shelf um and it's just it's just gonna be yeah another speed versus cunning that thing just rotted forever took forever for the lightning helixes to go up for that to be worthwhile for speed versus cunning so uh shameless self-promotion though if you do want a mine versus might we're, we are going to throw them up on rogue deck builder and probably put them at the msrp range for all of those that do want it and um if the thing is, it will cost us probably like $14 to get it from Drek from Wizards, and it just won't give us a lot of window uh, to make money off of these. So it, we'll probably do pre-orders for these, or just people, if you if you want this deck, uh, let me know, and I'll quote you a price. Uh, those are the, on Patreon, uh, all those that are a, a, a patron of mine, I probably will give a huge discount to this, and uh, we'll probably just do an order specifically for for the, the patrons over at Patreon. And so if you're interested in that, I'm going to try in the future to be uh, kind of an alpha investments ripoff and give a lot of my patrons kind of the, the, the discounted or if you're at the higher, higher tiers, you get everything at cost uh, from anything I can, I can get from distribution or, or, or right through Wizards of the Coast. A little bit of another thing is I might have some more. I was able to secure 20 more Modern Masters booster boxes. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I'm loving drafts, so we just might draft them like crazy. As long as people want to draft it at my store, we'll continue to draft it. A little bit update of that. I went 7-1 total with the blue flicker archetype. I was pushed into uh, blue-black flicker both times. Agony Warp is an incredibly good card. Uh, so is the Denova De Horror. Those are very, very fun to flicker. Uh, ends up being land destruction. So all those that watched my video, I got a couple of emails saying thank you for doing that video. They were able to win their draft pods with the blue flicker. I still think it's the best. Uh, the only hole in blue flicker is the black red sacrifice or black red burn. Uh, the rest of the, the matchups that I went up against were easy. Black black uh, green sacrifice was very, very easy. Uh, I populate, feel sorry for my friend who went populate because, uh, having four Miss Ravens in a deck is the worst nightmare. And then having them ghostly flickered back and getting rid of everything is just insane value. Uh, did very well against the, all the other archetypes. I think the blue flicker just crushes besides some of the very, very aggressive. Uh, and then you can, if you're in a blue white flicker, you have the lone missionary that can, can, that can kind of counter that type of strategy or if you're in the bant same thing with the centaur healer so anyway maybe i'll do an update video on that now i'm back into rambling so go check out my store if you're interested in mind versus might we'll put some pre-orders up on this and try to give you a fair deal we'll try to do this with the rest of the products too but overall again last conclusion i do not think this is worth it unless you just want to play it a lot of people like to collect these things like to play them out of the box so we like to do i usually like to play this and we'll give you analysis actually when we, we crack this up and play them against each other. But I'm really thinking the might is the might is just going to destroy mind uh, more often than not, just because of it just seems to be a better built deck. This one just seems to be very very dependent on getting some of these early draws. Who knows though? Maybe the Tower and, and Young Pyromancer will be enough. Uh, but I mean, yeah, because this does have very little removal. But even with the Young Pyromancer, I think this deck can push through uh, quite easily. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this deck. If you think my analysis is off, uh, this I think compared to recent dual decks is actually pretty pretty bad, pretty average. But all of them have been average to poor in at least value, playability, uh, the longevity, the shelf life of how this how long this will actually be a product that uh, sells for decent. 
Um, all of those, I think, just gets, get a very, very average, you know, below average rating. So, Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com, thanks for watching.